I will go back to that parliamentary report. The Chief Justice himself is accused in that particular report, and I'm sure it will come up for debate in the new, uh, when the parliament reopens, that uh, he himself was accused of fla flouting uh, rules of financial, uh, you know, propriety against the uh, advice of uh, Treasury. He is accused uh, of having let the commissioners of uh, the JSC receive uh, illegal allowances. Uh, there is a surcharge that was placed on him to recover illegally, uh, you know, uh, Ill illegally acquired uh, advances in salary. So he himself, even when he talks about uh, this corruption, those of us who are uh, in the, in the purview of this information also take it with a pinch of salt and say really you are complaining but you are not without blemish either mm -hmm. and you are not in accordance to the findings of your own colleagues mm -hmm. and in the findings of the parliamentary accounts committee you are not the right man for this job. Okay, let me come to Harrison and uh, away from the Chief Justice we do have a body that is there to regulate and watch over lawyers, LSK, Law Society of Kenya. Isn't there something they could have done as well? Or isn't there something that they could do to ensure that confidence is restored in the judiciary in Kenya? Um, without going into much detail, the Law Society has done quite a lot. And to be fair to the Law Society. First of all, the Law Society says that, look, you, the Supreme Court, I think we need to disband you. Why? Because this confidence that has attrition so much and abated to this level and degree brings your whole existence into question. And what happens? Oh, first of all, the chair of the Law Society is summoned to the Supreme Court. We want you to explain yourself why you said what you said. The CEO then has an issue and so on and so forth. I'll not go into those details. But you can see the efforts that the body of lawyers in this country has tried uh, to do and the efforts made so that the Supreme Court, being the apex court right up there, that is vested with the uh, constitutional power to direct the judicial policy in this country, to re-examine itself, to interrogate its own existence. And also, as Malaya Frey, Mrs. Funa has said, how about the intellectual input and Mr. Alon's uh, you know, approach to it. Like, what have you brought to the table in terms of jurisprudential development, in terms of interpretation of the law? And is it this narrow, reductionist, and very constricted perception merely to appease itself in terms of the very prominent Supreme Court decision it made to begin with? That is very wrong, in my view. Uh, approach that the Supreme Court has taken, that we are under attack. No, no one is attacking you. We would like jurisprudence coming from you. What, what is this idea about seven judges sitting together? They have a quote-unquote unanimous decision. We do not hear how each one of them perceived the issue before the court, laid the facts, analyzed the law, interpreted the Constitution, they themselves. So, coming back to the issue at hand that is now, because we hear about the state of the nation, there is an allegation about one Supreme Court receiving 200 million Kenya shillings. Now, the chair of the Law Society has said, I highly doubt if this was just one individual receiving these 200 million, and he was the quote-unquote the distributor, if I'm to use that in quotes, of these 200 million. Why? Because the Supreme Court has seven judges, and you need a minimum of at least four to be in your favor, in order to rule in your favor. Now, uh, that issue itself raises very grave questions. That if you have this one so-called unanimous judgment, and let me correct the public perception that there was a unanimous yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, judgment in the Kidero yeah, Waititu case. Yeah. It wasn't so. And I so. Rawal is uh, no, 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 no. It's, it's Justice Ndungu. Yes, Justice Njoki Ndungu. Yeah, yeah. But Justice Njoki Ndungu's judgment, when you read it, and I was a little bit astounded, she sounds that she has analyzed the whole issues and therefore she's agreeing that actually the election was not right. It was not proper of the governor of the Nairobi County. But when she comes to her conclusion, and she says, oh, my lawyer friends have decided in a majority that this is the issue, and therefore I agree with them. So we cannot technically speak <laughs> of a dissenting <laughs> judgment. Now, this is why I'm siding so, so with... are you saying that those who possibly saw that the judgment was... I mean, the, the elections were not held in a credible manner in their submission now at the end, they again have changed their... Absolutely! It's a turnaround, a 360-degree turnaround. Wow. 
Now, uh, Mike, here, here is where <laughs> we might... Uh, let me finish. <laughs> let me finish. So, now, you find that the Supreme Court then has this credibility issue with the law society. Forget about the Kenyan public. We legal practitioners. I go to court every day. I'm talking about something that I know is not something that I've read or been told. You begin questioning now, did these people individually analyze the issues before them and decide? Or is it that they are common policy that, well, we will be making one common judgment written by one of us? Then, if that be the case, doesn't that open the door to what now we are looking at, staring at Straight today? Mm -hmm. Because then if I know that we're in this bench, Mr. Sifuna is the lead judge. He's the one who is actually writing the judgment. All I need to do is, quote unquote, approach him. And then he's going to see how he's going to manipulate the rest of us and then dish out the money. And those of us who are not even known, for instance, it could be very possible that Honorable the Chief Justice did not receive a penny of that money. It could be very possible. The Honorable the Deputy Chief, Chief Justice did not receive a penny of that money. But we probably will know the facts when they do come out. Eventually. If they do. If they do. Come if out. they do. If they do. And that is a big if. Because given the past. That aside. That aside. Our Supreme Court then projected itself to we the legal practitioners. As a court which is lofty up there. Far removed from the practical realities and the functioning of our daily lives. And the law as we know it, and as it exists. And as Mr. Sifuna said, then a decision is made to appease that very same court to justify its existence. Right. It is wrong. Now, I just wanted to uh, say something. You know, in uh, legal circles, they say that uh, once uh, testimony has been reduced into a document, it is not uh, okay for us to introduce uh, oral evidence that is not contained in that particular in document. That document. Now, this gentleman, uh, the so-called whistleblower, took his time to put together a 60 paragraph plus affidavit. And in that affidavit, 60 paragraph, nowhere does he say that or make the allegation that Justice Tunoi was collecting this money on behalf of any other judge. Mm. He says, Justice Tunoi, what, that, that money was meant for the judge only. Now, the reason why I depart from my learned friends and uh, the LSK chair's uh, sentiments that this person could not have taken all this money for themselves is that we are introducing things that are not in the affidavit. This is a whistleblower. If that was the case, he would have said it. Now, the reason why I object to that particular line of reasoning is because that is an attempt then to draw in all the other judges that have not been uh, mentioned by this particular whistleblower and to tame their name forever because as I have said the allegation of corruption especially against a judge of uh, any court in this uh, in this world it is a death knell. it sounds a death knell for you and your career as a public servant and as a but, judicial but, officer but Edwin, Edwin, so they, just on the same yeah. line just on the same line yes in fact you should take this argument higher if I was sitting with you on the bench you have been accused of taking money and our decision was a bench decision it therefore follows that we are tainted this is the time where if the chief justice and the JSC were serious yes. they would have said we must rob the entire bench but he was part of a bench the that chief justice the, that's the, the chief justice that's and the, the deputy point. chief justice was, was, was this is the were, point. were part of a bench but the point that i was trying to make the the reading the judgment. yeah but they were part of a decision making the reading of a judgment point. is an administrative okay. uh, this one is of the now, where we can. now okay, let, let's see, allow Sifuna to finish yes, come to you the point that i was making is this and this is where in my personal opinion the politics begin because we have seen a concerted effort by for instance the uh, the law society of kenya when uh, when uh, the uh, the chair of the society was calling for the disbandment of of uh, the supreme court first of all that was not a position of a law society of kenya he did not consult anyone that was his own personal opinion and you have to fall back to the committee the report of the committee uh, the constitutional of kenya review commission that went around the country looking for reasons or for views from kenyans on the structure of the course that they wanted we came from a certain place when uh, the court of appeal was the apex court but Kenyans wanted a Supreme Court and there was reasons, concrete reasons for it. So for you to say this is the time for us to start the narrative on whether we need a Supreme Court in the first place is a debate that has been left, uh, that is led by about 
10 years already. That was his own personal view. And I am aware, for instance, that uh, the suspended CEO, Mr. Apollo Mboya, has filed petitions against five of the Supreme Court judges. And uh, this is something that I know because uh, him and Mutua are cohorts. I am sure Mr. Mutua supports uh, the that petition. Let's yeah, yeah, not use that expression. Cohorts is uh, too harsh. No, no, no. That's another, no, no, that's no, another no, side. No, no, this is, this is the truth. Yeah, yeah. Now, no, to, to go to the reason why the Law Society of Kenya, especially this current Law Society of Kenya, has been unable to, uh, you know, bring any meaningful pressure to bear is because they themselves, the current leadership of the society, is unable to answer questions from but the membership Mike, Mike, on issues of okay, integrity.